Janice, are you there? At your service, sir. Give me crowdfunding Tinder Schwindler. Will do, sir. Hi, everyone. Just wanted to make this quick little video on a Monday morning. Thanking everyone who's donated so far. Uh, it's been just such an amazing response to this fundraiser. Just want to say it is genuine, it is real, it is us. It's not Simon, it's not anyone else. It is the official one. It's over 9,000! What 9,000? Then the swindler. Women launch fund to clear their debts. Aim to raise $800,000. Total. Welcome to Manusphere Highlights Daily. Yesterday we made a video about the Tinder swindler, highlighting the story of one of the women. While doing our research for the video, we found an article about the women starting a crowdfunding campaign to pay off their debts. If you watch the documentary, they present these women as victims, and this is where we disagree. We do not condone the things that Simon Levive has done to the ladies. What happened to them is really messed up. But the ladies are not victims and we're gonna prove it in this video if you want to call them victims then they are victims of their own greed and i'm not gonna play devil's advocate but i am gonna play men's advocate because this shit is happening to men all the time but when a man is doing it he is called a tinder swindler and women can't start a crowdfunding campaign to clear their debts so i'm gonna read the article and then i'm gonna highlight five points why the ladies are not victims Shout out to the Patreon gang, salute! The original video is gonna be on Patreon because we have to respect the YouTube guidelines. That's why you will get a censored and filtered YouTube friendly version. So if you like what we do and you want to experience our content to the fullest extent, support us on Patreon. This video contains a lot of spoilers, so you've been warned. Now it's time for us to dive into this and do what we have to do. Because we men and we. We men and we. Tinder Swindler, women launch fund to clear their debts, aim to raise $800,000 total. Three women featured in the Netflix documentary, The Tinder Swindler, have launched a GoFundMe crowdfunding campaign to help them clear their debts. Cecile Pernella and Eileen Charlotte were all victims of the eponymous swindler, an Israeli man named Shimon Hayut who allegedly conned women on Tinder out of millions of dollars by catfishing them into believing his name was Simon Levive and that he was the son of Israeli diamond tycoon Lev Levive. The Tinder swindler started streaming February 2nd on Netflix. Fellas, Netflix got the ball rolling. Let's continue. You're probably there because you've heard about our story and we appreciate your taking the time to search and find this page. The women write on GoFundMe. The past few days have been a whirlwind and we three have been completely shocked and floored by the flood of compassion and support from everyone. The sheer love is more than we ever expected and we appreciate you all so much. After careful consideration and many chats, we have decided to start this GoFundMe fundraiser. So many people reached out to us asking if we had one and it hadn't occurred to us to make one prior to this, the women add. However, We've spotted plenty of fakes, which makes us uneasy. We don't want more people getting defrauded. We realize there are a thousand other worthy causes to donate to and remain forever grateful if you choose to donate to this one. All we want is our lives back. Fellas, this is an older story, okay? This clip from ABC is almost three years old. For Celia Feloy, it was an easy decision to swipe right. This guy, Simon, comes up on my phone and you can see that he lives a very different life than what I'm living. He had some uh, selfies, uh, a picture in a nice car. You could see that it was a private jet. Just an overall package. So Netflix brings a lot of fresh attention to this story leading to this crowdfunding campaign. And this is where things become a bit confusing. Let's read. The women have set a crowdfunding goal of around 600,000 pounds. Over its first three days, the fund has raised over 38,000 and counting from 1,800 donations. The women noted Shimon Hayada Hayut and his team of professional con artists have defrauded all three of us for large sums of money. If you have the opportunity to help, we are forever grateful. But knowing that you've even checked out this page in solidarity means the world to us. They are asking for $800,000. So what happened to the money 
in those three years. Credit card interest rate? They don't talk about it. At this moment, they've collected 131,000 pounds. My issue is not the crowdfunding campaign. My issue is not that people are donating. My issue is that these women are portrayed as victims. So if you're gonna donate to them because you feel that they have been victimized, then I disagree with your donation. So we're gonna highlight why we don't see them as victims. Point number one, dating safety tips. This is how the documentary starts. I think everyone would love to just meet someone in a bar or in a grocery store. But nowadays, the best way you can meet someone is on a dating app. Okay, in modern society, online dating has become the norm. If you go on a dating app, they have policies and will warn you about the dangers of online dating. Tinder has dating safety tips. Let's read. Dating safety tips. Meeting new people is exciting, but you should always be cautious when interacting with someone you don't know. All right? You don't know. Use your best judgment and put your safety first. Whether you are exchanging initial messages or meeting in person. While you can't control the actions of others, there are things you can do to help you stay safe during your Tinder experience. You see, you cannot control the actions of others, but there are things you can do to help you stay safe. And that's exactly how we're going to judge them based on their actions. So there's a whole list of tips. They mention scammers, but also tips about meeting in person. Don't be in a rush. Take your time and get to know the other person before agreeing to meet or chat off Tinder. Don't be afraid to ask questions to screen for any red flags or personal deal breakers. A phone or video call can be a useful screening tool before meeting. So scammers are part of online dating. This does not mean that what they do is right. However, this does mean you have to be careful and protect yourself at all times. Point number two. Too good to be true. I get this confirmation from Simon the Vibe at LED Diamonds. Of course, I started to Google because you always Google everyone you're supposed to go on a date with. His father is this diamond tycoon and I'm just thinking, oh my God, another diamond guy. <laughs> it's obvious that the women in this video were all attracted to his lavish lifestyle and billionaire status. They googled him and they found exactly what they wanted to see. Prince Charming. Now here's the question. What in the blue hell is Prince Charming doing on Tinder? And why in the blue hell would he be interested in you? <laughs> With all due respect, ladies, but the women he was and still is pulling, you cannot compete with them. In the club, it's basically an ocean with women, or as I call them, champagne girls. They are basically like flies that you put out, like a rotten banana, and they just attack. But these girls do the same thing when they see a bottle of champagne. <laughs> And Simon is, of course, paying for this entire circus. He's paying with cash and just making sure that everyone is having a good time. It is what it is, and it is too good to be true. When these ladies swipe right on him and they matched, that's when that Disney princess syndrome was triggered and rational thought was out the window. Point number three, Disney princess syndrome. In my opinion, this is women's biggest problem when it comes to dating. This mentality is creating many, 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 many cat ladies. I saw that this girl Cecilia met him on Tinder. I also met him on Tinder. He also took me to a five-star hotel on the first date. Simon Levive basically ran the same game on all of the women. They all met at a five-star restaurant or hotel the same day they matched. The first woman got on a private jet to Bulgaria. The second woman got flown out to the Netherlands. And just like mentioned in the dating safety tips, take your time and get to know the other person before agreeing to meet or chat off Tinder. They all ignored this tip because they all crave to be princesses. They all crave this Disney fairy tale experience. Shit, Ooh, this is something new that I've never done before. 
I felt that I would be stupid if I said no. So I was kind of like super excited on the inside, but on, on the outside I kept it very cool uh, because I was just thinking, okay, you like this guy, you just need to keep it cool now. She felt stupid if she would refuse to go with him. The fact that she feels stupid proves that this experience is rare and it couldn't wait because she's been dreaming about this since she was a little girl. Simon Levive made these women want to meet him based on his Tinder and Instagram profile, which spoke to that little princess fantasy that has been installed in her system since childhood. And when he had them on the date, he had them hooked. It was like horrible, you know. Because I still, because I, because in a sense I still loved him, you know. Or the person I thought that he was. Like, you know, everything's a lie. But then you still have this fairy tale that's going on on your phone, you know? Simon with, like, still the heart behind it. Because I could never, like, I couldn't remove it. Because I still wanted him to be true, you know? They don't want this fairy tale to end. So they will do everything to keep it going. Check this out. You can be two different type of personalities sometimes. So either you can be a battery charger or a battery drainer. Work hard, play hard. And he was definitely my battery charger. Amazing, amazing, beautiful dress. Once I remember, like, he flew over just to have a coffee with me one day because I was having a bad day. Nilla. About 10 o'clock, we're going for a drink, and then 12.30, we're going to the club. Can't wait to see you later, babe. I gave him a little bit of a prince emoji next to his name because that's how he's behaving sometimes. Prince emoji. Where does that come from? Disney fairy tales. And a survey brought up some disturbing statistics about Tinder usage. Why do people use Tinder for? 44.44% said they use it for confidence boosting procrastination. Janice. Confidence boosting procrastination. It is the act of avoiding the real stuff in life while doing something that makes you feel good about yourself. Procrastinating on the important stuff in life while boosting your ego with strangers liking how you look. One of the ladies was on Tinder for seven years and look at this. Have you been on Tinder since? Yes. No, tons. Uh, I don't know. Everyone's just asking me, like, Tinder has nothing to do with this. Like, I was on Tinder immediately. You're still looking for love? I'm still looking for love. So, <laughs> always. She went straight back to the app, looking for quote-unquote love. You have to understand, guys, women don't love the way we as men love. Simon Levive was boosting their ego on the level over 9,000. What? 9,000? Over 9,000! They wanted him to be true for selfish reasons. It was never about him. It was never about him. It was always about what he could do for them and he made them feel good. Can you make me feel good? Can you make me feel good? When they gave him the money, they gave it to him because they thought they were gonna get it back. Check this out. Eileen, can I ask you a favor? Can you put me one lottery ticket with numbers that I can choose? How pathetic can you be? I thought you were a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> This is why these women are not victims, because they jumped on him for money, status, resources. They had no problems going on private jets, eating at five-star restaurants, staying at five-star hotels. They were not paying for any of these things, because that's not what a princess does, right? This is why 80-90% of men are invisible, because the majority of women are looking for Prince Charming. Simon Levive has a new girlfriend after spending five months in jail. She doesn't care because she wants to be a princess as well. If he was broke, then she would not be there. Point number four, ignoring friends' advice. I have a messenger group with my girlfriends. My friends are freaking out. Who is this guy? How do you know him? You can be abducted. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Like, I'm just <laughs> I'm on a date, you know. <laughs> YOLO! You only live once. And she was willing to put her life on the line for this experience. This is her own choice. Just like the dating safety tip said. While you can't control the actions of others, there are things you can do to help you stay safe during your Tinder experience. Her answer? 
YOLO. Does this sound like a victim to you? Oh, hell no. Point number five, ignoring red flags. The ex-girlfriend slash mother of his child is on the first date with her. Later in the documentary, she finds out that the ex-girlfriend testified against him in court. And this is what she said about it. Things that she told me in that car made me really believe that he was a great guy. Why didn't she warn me? She did warn you. Who in the blue hell is going on a date with an ex-girlfriend present? If this guy was broke, you would not be there. He asked for money after a month of spending time with her, saying his enemies are after him. What billionaire is going to ask his girlfriend to max out her credit card again and again and again? He's supposed to be the CEO of that billion dollar diamond company. He's supposed to be part of that rich family and these women are giving him that money without asking any serious questions because they don't want this dream to end. Check this out. And Simon had already told me that this would happen, that it would be something that I would need to do at the start to call them and fix this. The other problem was that the credit limit wasn't enough. We had to get it up so he could spend it because he had an entire team, you know. So I was like, okay, but how are you going to do that? And then I said, well, I can employ you. Critical thinking. If he has a team, then the team is supposed to handle this, not his girlfriend or friend. He is the CEO of a billion dollar company. Money shouldn't be his problem. And check this out. I am furious. Why would Simon do this to me? This was a friend who I really cared about, who I loved. I don't understand how someone can be so evil. I felt that he knew me. YOLO. How can he do this? These women are shocked that something like this could actually happen to them. But this happens to men all the time. And Netflix is not going to make a documentary because it will make women look bad. It starts with dating. I decided I was going to crack this code and I quite literally, I don't recommend it, but I made dating my job and I was dating on some days, three, four, five people a day. Uh, and, <laughs> and, um, all of my mistakes serve me now in my new career as a dating coach. Women go on free dates all the time and they want to get upset when a man wants to split the bill. These women in this documentary had no problem with him paying for everything. But if it was the other way around, they would not be doing this. Men get scammed on the internet all the time. So the total amount spent was $317,000. She communicated with me and I communicate with her every single day. 75% of the money was spent on stickers and photos. Uh, what I wasn't aware of was how sophisticated this new type of scam was. A lonely widow in Ghana. She said that her in-laws were mistreating her. She asked Rogers for help. Probably four to six weeks before she asked about getting her power turned back on, um, which at the time to me seemed like a simple request. It started with small amounts. In total, Rogers ended up sending $14,000. But Rams never existed. This picture actually belongs to a porn star named Raven Riley. Nobody feels sorry for them because men are disposable. Cardi B admits what she was doing on camera. I must have forgot my the shit that I did to survive. Like, I had to go straight. I had to go, oh yeah, you wanna fuck me? Yeah, 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 let's go to this hotel. And I dropped up and I robbed them. That's what I used to do. If this was a man, he would be in jail, canceled. Cardi B is applauded. She's a heroine. The institution of marriage, where do you start? How many women have taken men to the cleaners, took half of their assets, took away their children? No fault divorce. Janet Jackson marries a billionaire and she takes his money the first opportunity she gets. Nicolas Cage was married for four days and his ex-wife has the audacity to ask for spousal support. Dr. Dre had a prenup and still had to pay. Getting married in modern society is foolishness. Nowhere in this documentary did the women hold themselves accountable for their actions. You either make yourself accountable or you will be made accountable by your circumstances. 
Hello everyone, I just wanted to make this little update and thank you all that we have reached 100,000 pounds and more. This is insane, like when we set this up it was not to cover the entire sum and, and we know that there's so many other causes out there but if people wanted to help we wouldn't say no this time so thank you so so much that we might finally get our lives back and we might start living and helping others and do something positive with our experience so thank you so much we appreciate it and god i can't even i can't even describe how happy the last week has been and just to see that there's so many who wants to help us like the world is actually really really beautiful so thank you manosphere we working protect yourself at all times this video has officially been highlighted, highlighted.